as we've learned, faith is hearing and doing. Romans 1.17 says, The just shall live by faith. Who is the just? We are. The justified. We are to live by faith. Faith is not a one-time act. We, we use it all day, every day in our life, for everything. And where does faith come from? It plainly says, Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not hearing stories by storytellers that we have in churches many times. No, it comes by the word of God. That's where our faith comes from, by hearing, by hearing his words. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith. Is that what Noah did? When God told him to build a boat, there was no water. He had faith in God. Okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do. This is what I'm going to do. You want me to build a boat? I don't know why, but I'm going to build it because you, you told me to. Moses, taking the, the, the Jews out of uh, Egypt, ran into the Red Sea. Moses had faith. That God was going to do something. He didn't know what. But he knew God was going to do something. Because God told him. I want you to take my people out. And take them to the promised land. Promised land. And if God said. I'm going to take the people out. And take them to the promised land. Then what's going to happen? You're going to take them to the They're going to the promised land. Moses had faith in that. Abraham. Left with his family. Rooted up his family. And went to another land. Why? Because God told him. Faith comes by hearing. We need to hear from God first, and then we act. In Hebrews 3.14, For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. If we're faithful to the end. Now, some of these verses might sound like you can lose your salvation, but we're not talking about that. I done had a teaching showing that you, eternal security is for real. But these verses I'm going to be using, we're talking about faith here. If we're faithful to the end. Because you can be born again and stop walking with the Lord. It's not pleasing to His eyes. But you can be born again and quit walking by faith. You're, you're pretty much, I don't know if there's such a thing, but you're pretty, mu pretty much a dead Christian. You're a Christian here and you're alive. He's giving us life. But you're not doing anything for the Lord. You're going to walk at the feet of life. So don't get confused here when I'm saying if we're faithful to Him. It doesn't, we're not talking about salvation. We're talking about faith, okay? Colossians 1.23 If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under the heaven, and wherefore I, Paul, am a made a minister. Right here it says, and which was preached to every creature which is under the heaven. Nobody will be able to stand before God and say, I didn't know. Because he says it right here. In other places he says it. But he says it right here. He, he's going he's gonna to show himself to every person. Every person. He says, if we continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and not be moved from the hope that we have in the gospel, that we've heard. Also in John 8, 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. What Paul is saying, the mark of a true born-again Christian is when they continue in his faith. And show that they are firmly established in the word of God. That's the mark of a true Christian. He speaks about finishing the race that has been set before us. We need to finish the, way, the race in faith. In everything that he says. Whatever he says. As we go through life. As the more he shows to us his words. And the more his words come alive to us. We have to have faith in them that they are alive. There are many people who receive the word. They receive the word. But then in Luke 8.13, it says, 
they on the rock are they, which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. What he's saying here, they they receive the word like these Christian concerts. They get all, you know, people get all fired up at these Christian concerts. Everybody's raising their hands. Everybody's having fun. You have, you take a friend and, oh yes, I want to receive the Lord because it's just, it's that, kind of, it's that kind of atmosphere. And he listens and he hears the word, but then when he leaves and he's by himself and temptations come, what happens? He falls away. That's what he's talking about right here. If you fall away from the Lord, if you don't continue, what happens? It just shows that you weren't truly saved. You didn't lose it. You weren't truly there. You did not give Him your heart. You gave Him your emotions at that time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. That's what you gave Him. You didn't give Him your heart. Also in 1 John 2.19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. They went out. Continuing in, his, in believing in God. Not just believing that He is the Savior. That He's God. But believing in His words. If you continue, then you show that you are truly born again. Truly born again. And I know they have people about eternal security. They say they lost it. No, they didn't lose it. They never had it. They, they didn't receive it from the heart. And in John chapter 6, Jesus is speaking to the people and he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And Jesus said that. They started to complain about what he had said. And in verse 48 of chapter 6, he proclaims that he is the bread of life. And in verse 61, Jesus says, Does this offend you? And because of, of that, in verse 64, He says, But there are some of you that believe not. And He tells them, in verse 66, From that time, many of His disciples went back and walked no more with Him. His disciples. Now, we're not talking about the twelve disciples. People who followed the Lord are disciples. Okay. And he's not talking about the twelve disciples, but he's many were walking after him. But he said things and they started to complain and, and he started to offend them. And what happened? Turned away. They turned away. People who give their life to the Lord or think they give their life to the Lord and, and as soon as they hear something they don't like, whatever the preacher might say or what they, they read in the Bible and they're like, Hmm. You have many people who do that. When you get right down, right down to it, okay, are you a Christian? Yes. The Word of God is going to offend us. Because we don't know, you know, we don't know how to live life. And maybe we've been doing things that we shouldn't have been having fun at it. But the Lord shows us, hey, that's wrong. And some people get offended by that. Praise God when He offends me. Because He offends me, that means He's teaching me. All right? So to continue with him, we have to believe and have faith in everything he says. And that's the way we do. That's what we do when he tells us what to do. Faith is not one of the ways to please God. It's the only way to please God. Because Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. If we're born again Christians, what's the number one thing on our hearts? It's to please the Lord. And the Lord says, we can only do it by faith. Faith in what? Faith in His words. Believe in His words. And doing them. Luke 8, 21. And He answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? It's those who hear the words of God and do it. That's who... Jesus' mother is, and that's who Jesus' brother is. It says it right here. Who is my mother and who is my brother? But those who hear the word of God and do it. 
James chapter 2, verse 14. What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If we say we, we, we are believers in Christ, but we don't show the new creature that the Lord says happens when you become born again, then where's the works? Where's the, the new creature at? Faith produces works. Faith produces works. And works is when you're doing what God says. It's not works and faith. It's faith then works. Faith without works is like saying, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe everything that God says. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can we walk with God unless we're in agreement with His words? All His words. We're in agreement with Him. Period. 100%. He said, how can you walk with me if you're not going to be in agreement with me? If my words, if I tell you this in my words and you don't agree with me, how can you walk with me? Right. So what are you saying? So we have to have faith in the word of, in the words of God. We have to believe them, have faith in them. Because if we don't, we can't walk with them. That's what I see. And also verses 19 through 21, it says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. At least the devils believe and have sense enough to tremble. We have people down here that don't. They believe in God, but they don't tremble. It doesn't bother them. Oh, I, oh, I know there's a God, but hey, I'm living my life. I'm doing what I want to do. They have no fear. Even the devils, the devils had fear. They had more wisdom than lost people. I mean, their wisdom wasn't enough to accept Jesus, but at least they had the wisdom to know, to fear God. Who he was. We have people nowadays that don't bother them one little bit. Yeah. Verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It's saying, how foolish. Can't you see that faith without doing his words is useless? That's what he's saying. Faith without works is dead. So if you have faith, you're going to do what you read, what the Lord shows you. But if you don't, then your faith is dead. That's what it says right here. Just like I read in James 1.22. If you hear only and don't do, what good is it? What is it? What good is it when you hear the Word of God, but you don't do it? It's just like going in one ear and out the other. It's not, it's not penetrating the heart where you can receive it and do it. Verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? James is teaching that Abraham's willingness to offer Isaac was to support his faith before men. Not salvation. It was to show men his faith in God. That's what uh, Abraham was doing. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and and God counted him as righteous because of his faith to do what he says. You know, can I, if the Lord says, Jesse, I want you to sacrifice your son. That'd be kind of hard to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, you really got to believe and have faith and walk with God to do it. Abraham, Abraham did it. Yeah. He was a man just like you and I. He was a man. And he did it. That's faith. Do we have that kind of faith? If we don't, then that's what we'll find later. We need to pray for that. Right. Lord, give me that faith. We, we talk about things Jesus did, but then some of us are like, well, that was Jesus. Eh, we're talking about Abraham here. A man just like us. In 2 Corinthians 13.5, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate, meaning wicked, deceiving people around you. That's what that means. Paul saying that we need to check ourselves out. Do we really have faith we need to follow Jesus? To have him in us and follow him? That's what he's saying right here. If we don't know how to check ourselves out, then we need to read... Uh, what Job said in, in Job 13.23. Job says, How many are my iniquities and sin? Make me to know my transgressions and my sin. 
Job is saying, hey, show me my sins. I want, I want to walk with you. Show me my sins so I can walk with you. That's, that's the way we need to be. Lord, show me my I know this is sin, I know, but I know there are sins out there that I might not know of, that I might be committing. So show me, show me, so I can repent of them, because I want to have a close walk with you. That's what Job was doing. Also in Psalms 26.2, I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. Can we say that to the Lord? I mean, can we really say that to the Lord? So, Lord, and say, Lord, test me, check my heart out, show me. That's that's when you're wanting to walk with the Lord. When you're asking the Lord to show you where your heart is. Amen. Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Amen? Amen. I mean, do we have a heart like that? That's, that's... <sighs> David is right here in Psalms. David pleads with God to show him his ways. That's what he's doing. We need to do that. Yeah. Lord, if I don't have enough wor- faith in your words, help me. Show me. Help me. And that's what he's doing tonight. That's what he's been doing for the last three nights. He's, he's shown us what is faith. This is what faith is. I'm going to show you how to have it and how to use it. Yeah. Colossians 2 8. I'm going to read this out of Living Bible also. The things that I read out of Living Bible is because in the King James, if they were hard for me to understand, <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm thinking, well, I better say this. I better uh, say these out of the Living Bible. It says, Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with, your, with their philosophies. They're wrong and shallow answers built on men's thoughts and ideals instead on instead of on what Christ has said. The Lord said these men with their with their philosophies and he said they're wrong and they're shallow. He doesn't listen to them. Go by what I said. Yeah. Who invented retirement? Yeah. Men. Men invented retirement. We need men said, hey, we need retirement. So we can take care of ourselves when we reti- when we retire. They don't even know if they're going to be here to retire. Right. But that's what they're saying, right? I'm putting this money aside so I can take care of myself if I get there. And what does the Lord say? He said, "Hey, don't worry about tomorrow." He said, "I got tomorrow. Don't worry about it." That takes faith, people. Yeah. That takes faith. That's what we're learning. What is faith? Faith is hearing God, and we've heard from Him, and then obeying it, believing it. That's what faith is. You know, after this teaching, we're like, man, I thought I had faith. God's shown us what faith is. We don't want to be like the people He's talking about in Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. There is no evidence that they know him when they deceive people when they're not when they're not, when they're not obeying the word of God. There's no evidence that they're a born again Christian. You see what I'm saying? What is what it's saying here? Works doesn't save you, but it shows you where you are with the Lord. And he says, they are unworthy, unacceptable, so they are rejected by God. It's hard to be a Christian when you say, I don't believe that. I don't have faith in that. It's hard to be a Christian that way. And right here it says, people who are like that are unworthy or unacceptable, and they're rejected by God. This is the way we need to be in God's eyes. Titus 2.14 Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquities and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. We know that Jesus gave us life. Right? He has, by us giving us our, our heart to him we know he has forgiven us. He's cleansed us. Right? And when he does that it says He's made us special. 
He's made us his own. Amen. He has made us his own. I love being owned by God. I like the word peculiar, if I can pronounce it. <laughs> peculiar. Because it also means funny. It means, you, it means we're a funny people. You know why others think we're funny people? Because they don't understand us. They don't understand God's ways. And when we live by God's ways, to other people, we're... Oh, they're, oh. <laughs> they don't understand it. That's part of it. Yeah, they'll think we're weird. <laughs> it says that we're very loyal in doing God's commands. Amen. We're loyal to doing God's commands. Bottom line, when we are faithful to the words of God, it will show when we obey them, and when, and when we do obey them, our works will show. That's what works means. Okay? Works. There's some religions out there, they have to work for their salvation. We don't have to work for our salvation. As soon as we ask the Lord to come into our heart, into our heart, not into our mind, but in our, as soon as we ask Him to come into our heart, we we're saved. We've given Him our heart. He doesn't tell you, okay, well, go do this and go do that, and, and, and then, then I might save you. Uh, our God is so good, all we have to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. Take my life over. That's it. We don't have to work for it. Now, now that we've done that, like I said, now we believe His words. And if we believe His words, then works will come about. Okay? Now, let me show you in the Scriptures a true story. Let me show you what faith is. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 1. and I'm, a, I'm not going to read verses 1 through 20, but that's... I'm a, I'm going to just touch on what verses 1 through 20 say, okay? King Jehoshaphat was a leader, a king. And pretty much the way your leader is, that's the way you're going to be. Whoever your leader is, that's how you're going to be. And their leader was not a man of God. So pretty much the nation of Judah was not fearing God at the time because their king wasn't fearing God. If he didn't fear God, then they didn't fear God. So this king Nebuchadnezzar took over Judah. He defeated this king and took over Judah. He was a wicked king also. And this king wanted all the children, and most of these were teenagers, to be trained. He said, when they captured Judah, they, he told his leaders, get the smart ones, get the intelligent, kid, intelligent kids, and bring them to me. That's what he said. He wanted to teach them their way of life, their beliefs. That's what he wanted to do. And he said, if they do well, he says, I'm going to have them, I'm going to have a place for them in my kingdom. So this is what King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to do. But there were four teenagers. They're teenagers. There were four teenage boys who didn't want to follow the king's order. Because he had told, first he had told them, this is what I want you to eat and drink. Telling these kids. And these four teenagers didn't want to eat that food. Because it was defiled food. In Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14, the Lord tells Moses and Aaron what food to eat and what food not to eat. Daniel knew by taking one step towards their way, what, what it would lead to. And I've said it over and over. Just a little, just a little sin can grow to be a great sin. Right. It just adds to other sins. Okay, so he didn't. Even, they didn't even eat the food that the king wanted them to eat. And that reasons was because of those chapters that I just told you about. At that time, God had food that was defiled, and they didn't want to eat of that food. These young men were under a lot of pressure to conform like them. Same way today. We have the same thing today. Yeah. It's no different. You want to be accepted by the world, you have to be conformed to the world. If you want to be accepted by the world. But we don't want to be accepted by the world. We want to be accepted by the Lord. So we're going to do it the Lord's way. And what's that do? It makes us very unpopular. Right. How many people want to be popular? Most people want to be popular. They don't want to be rejected. But when you give her 
when we give our lives to the Lord, believe me, we are going to be rejected. Because this world is full of darkness. And there's no way they're going to like the light shining in their darkness. So we will be rejected. I mean, the Bible says, the Lord says, they will hate you because first they hated me. And being that we're like Him, they're going to hate us. Right. We live in the light in a world that's full of darkness. Amen. The light is stronger than darkness, though. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, we're going to see that there was a bunch of kids that captured. And out of all those kids, there were four teenagers who said, No, I'm not going to do that. Let's notice that Daniel didn't make some big commotion out of this. No, I'm not going to eat that food. And, you know, we do that today. We make big commotions. The school don't want prayer. They don't want prayer in schools. Okay, well then, what? We can't pray in our thoughts? We can pray without nobody knowing. Why are we going to make a big commotion of it? Remember, the Lord says, we're no longer of this world. We don't belong to this kingdom. So if this kingdom says, hey, no praying. No, okay. But you can't stop me from praying in my, in my thoughts. Amen. Amen. <laughs> abortion. Yeah, abortion is wrong. It's sin. But the Lord didn't say go put up picket lines in, in, in front of the abortion clinic. He didn't tell us to do any of that stuff. Where this is not our home. Why are we trying to tell people who live in another place how to live? I'm talking about we tell them salvation, but that's it. We talk to them about Jesus. But to try to change this world, we're, the Lord didn't put us here to do that. He, told, he put us here to witness to people about Him. That's it. Just like here, they didn't make a big commotion out of, well, you know, you can't make us eat that, blah, 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 you know. They asked the guy, they, re they requested to him, hey, can we not eat this food? And they made a deal. Daniel made a choice to follow God and not man. And in doing so, now it's in God's hands. When we stand on the words of God, He takes care of us. The Bible teaches that a son or sons of parents are to stay with them and take care of them until they die. And I believe that. I believe it's a command from God to do. And I definitely have a good example of it. My job. My job wanted me to move away. But my parents were living. My father was sick. I had faith in God. He would take care of me. I had faith in God that he would take care of me. I did not take the job. My boss let me go. But I found another job. The Lord gave me another job. He gave me another job. Why? Because I, I, I did what God says to do. Take care of your parents. You're the son, you take care of your parents. So I knew, okay, I'm doing God's will here. And if I'm doing God's will, now he's, I guess you could say the ball's in his court. Now he has to take care of me because now I'm standing on what he says. Right. So now it's in his hands to take care of me because he said he would. And amen, he did. The Lord wants obedience. That is above all. When we claim to be Christians, He wants obedience. This is what the prophet Samuel said to King Saul in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 and 23, out of the Living Bible. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, or your obedience to His voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offerings, offering the fat of rams. For those who think by going to church on Sunday and, and giving 10%, that's going to make them right with God. God says, hey, I would rather have your obedience than you to go to church every Sunday. Or you give 10% of, you know, God says, hey, that's, no, I want obedience. That's what he wants. And that's what Samuel is telling Saul right here. In verse 23, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. 
Now you didn't say Saul lost his salvation because Saul was a man of God. But he says, but he's going to reject you as king. This is not being a Christian when we live this way. Just like I said before, we're, we're going to go before him and say, hey, then we do this, then we go to church every Sunday and then we do this in your name and blah, blah. And what's the Lord going to say to us? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. He wants obedience. Obedience on what? He wants us to obey his words. That's what he wants. Obey his ways. That's where faith comes in, is to believe that. Is to believe that and do it. I mean, faith, that is, that's pretty much, I'm going to repeat it over and over. Hearing and then doing. That's faith. In verse 17, because of their obedience to God, look at what he gave them. He gave them knowledge and special and intelligible uh, abilities. He gave them special skills and wisdom. Because of them obeying Him, the Lord gave them this. He gave them because He approved of their faith and their commitment to His words. That's why He gave them these gifts. And to Daniel, He gave a little more. He gave Daniel the interpret to, to interpret visions and dreams, which later on He does that, but we're not going to get on that. And now these gifts are found in the New Testament also. These gifts are for today. In 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 10, it talks about these gifts. So we have these gifts still today. Now, they've completed three years of the king's teachings. Now they went to the teachings. They didn't eat the defiled food. And they didn't, they went, but they weren't accepting their teachings. What they did was accept what God gave them. And what did God give them? Knowledge and wisdom. They went to the teachings. Now, what you call that today, when you go to college and learn things that are not of the Lord, and that's what you believe and that's what you go by, uh, some people would call, would, would call that brainwashed. They were brainwashed to believe the Babylonian way. This is our ways. This is our gods. So they were brainwashed to learn their ways, except for these four teenagers. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. When we follow the Lord, we have much more wisdom than the world. Mm -hmm. Right here it says ten times. But it is it's more than that. He had his, his, his men, his magicians and astrologers, you know, he had these guys. But these four teenagers had more, ten times more wisdom than they did. And it pleased the king. Now we're going to, let's drop down to chapter 3. That was chapter 1. Let's drop down to fat, chapter 3. The king made a gold statue. And the king, and the king commanded in Daniel 3.7, he says, Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the Cornet, the flute, the harp, the sabbath, the psalmsery, and all kinds of music. All the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. This verse right here, this is, is exactly what's going to happen in the tribulation. It's exactly. Right here the king says, those who don't bow down... When they hear this music, if they don't do the things that the king said to do, bow down to the statue, they're going to be killed. What's going to happen in the tribulation if you don't take the mark of the beast? Some of us will be headed. Not us, but some of those who are there are going to be beheaded for not taking the mark. So the, same, the beast, the antichrist is just going to say, I, this is what I want, and if you don't do it, you die. That's what's going to happen during the tribulation. Either you take the mark, right? Like right here, it said all the people, all the nations fell down and worship that statue, except for, for these four teenagers. And that's what's going to happen in tribulation. People are going to fall down to the Antichrist just so they wouldn't be killed. Right. That's why in, in, in Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you got to know these books very well to understand Revelations because this is what it speaks about. You had some Galileans is what they were calling them. They went to go tell the king that 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't bow down and worship this statue. And the king ordered for these three to come to him. And he says, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to play this music. I want you to bow down. And the only reason they gave, the only reason the king gave them another chance, those three teenagers, because Daniel, Daniel, now Daniel's not mentioned here. Daniel, I don't know where he was. He could have been out of town. I don't know, somewhere else. But he wasn't here. But he, but the king was very close to Daniel. And because he knew this was his three buddies, he gave him another chance. He said, I'm going to give you another chance. If it was anybody else, he probably would have just said, put them in the fiery furnace because that's, that's where they had to go if they wouldn't bow down. Throw them in the fire. And the king says in verse 15, and because the guys, the guys wouldn't go and they believed in their God, and it says in verse 15, the king says, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? There's going to come a day. There's going to come a day when these lost people, this lost king, everybody who's lost, when they like, who is this God? There's going to come a day they're going to know exactly who God is. It's coming. I don't know when. I hope it's close. But it is coming. And everybody will know who God is. They won't be asking this question. Who's this God you're you're worshiping that you're acting like an idiot uh, they're going to find out and he told them in verse verses 17 and 18 he says no they said if it be so this is what the three teenagers said if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king but if it not but he's saying, if, but if he doesn't, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Amen. Amen. We need to be like that. I hope we're like that. Let me tell you something. I know you might say, oh, I, I, that's what I'm going to do. You know, just like Peter. I'm sure he, he never believed that he would deny Christ. But when the time came, what happened? So we can't say, oh, I'll never do that. I hope this is this is what I'll do. Right. I mean, in my head, I can say, "Oh, I'm not. I love the Lord. I'm not gonna." Well, when the, if the time ever comes, I hope I'm strong enough to be like this and say, "Hey, how many of us are in this place?" We might say, "Well, Lord, even if you don't heal my my mother or anyone in the family, even if you don't heal them, heal them, I'm gonna walk with you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna believe in you." Or even if you don't save my mother or somebody in the family, I'm still going to live for you, Lord. Or if you don't give me whatever, you're still my God. That's the way we need to be. Even if he doesn't, we need to be that way. Right. And the king was so mad, he had them put in the furnace. He told the, the men, turn the furnace up seven times hotter than usual. And he says, and throw them in. And they threw them in. The men that threw them in was killed themselves because the fire was so hot. When they threw them in, the men that threw them in was killed because the fire was so hot. And the king says, after he throw, after they throw them in, the king says, I see four men untied just walking around in there. And he said, one of them looks like the Son of God. <laughs> Amen. This is God to be there. Really? Remember the question back in verse 15? Remember he says, Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Well, it answers him right here. It's the Son of God, Amen. Jesus. <laughs> this is our God. This is our Jesus. Jesus was in the fire with them. And they didn't, I mean, the hair on them didn't get burnt. Nothing. In fact, when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke, it says. That's what Jesus does. Amen. <laughs> he wanted to know who this God was. <laughs> well, he saw him. It was Jesus. This is going to happen with us. That's why the Lord said in the New Testament, in the New Testament, God says in 1 Peter 4, 12, be loved. Just that one word, just that one word, God said, be loved. I mean, how personal does he get with us? He, he says, be loved. It's like I'm talking to Jody and I tell her, honey, 
and I say whatever I have to say, I'm showing her I love you. I'm calling her honey or baby, whatever, sweetheart. That's being very personal, showing her how close she is to me. Well, this is what God is doing right here. He's tell, He's saying to us, Beloved, my loved one, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has <clears throat> as though some strange thing happened unto you. Now there's different kinds of fiery furnaces out there for us. He's saying don't be surprised when you go through persecution for being a Christian, being mistreated for being a believer. It's testing our faith when we don't fall. That's testing our faith. If you're being prosecuted for being a believer of God, and so you stop you stop letting it be known that you're a Christian just so you can be accepted because you don't want to be being prosecuted. You know, right here in America, persecution is just not being accepted by other people. That's our persecution. But in other nations, they are being killed for standing, for being a Christian. Right. Praise God we live in this country. Like I said, I don't love this country because of the things it's doing, wanting to get away from God and all that. I don't love this country, but I do thank the Lord that I do live in a country where we can have Bible study, we can worship, and we don't have to fear death. Not yet. Right. Yeah. So praise God about that. So he says, don't, don't be surprised when these things happen. It helps your faith. It helps show you where your faith is when you don't fall to it, through their temptations, whatever it may be. Then in Daniel, again in verse 28, of chapter 3 then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him that trusted in him amen, amen. are we servants that trust in God do we trust him I mean do we read the Bible read his words and we trust what we believe what we read they did and have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. This king has totally changed. He said, "Hey, they're not going to be. We're not going to worship any gods but their gods. Amen. Their god, because he's seen with his eyes the miracle what God can do. And if he did it then, believe me, he does it today." And we, have, we need to believe that. We have to believe that. We have to believe that if we want to walk with the Lord. If you want to be a strong Christian, we have to believe that. Now, this happened about a hundred years ago. Back in Isaiah. The Lord gave this promise. And this is what they were standing on. Back in Isaiah, this was a hundred years. This promise was given a hundred years before this happened. Back in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 and 2. I want to read it out of the Living Bible. It says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed, ransomed you, meaning He has redeemed us. I have called you by name. You are mine. God, amen? amen. I mean, this is what... This is our God speaking to us. And in verse 2, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Amen? Amen? When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Amen? God. I mean, listen to these verses. When you walk through the fire of oppression, the fiery furnace, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. These teenagers were standing on the Word of God. This was given before they, they went through this. So they heard the word from God. They read this. They, they knew what God said. And God promised them, Hey, when these things happen, you will be alright. I'm going to take care of you. These teenagers, teenagers, believed that and stood on faith and said, No, we're not going to worship the statue. Throw us in the fire. Our God's going to take care of us. That's faith. Believe in God. It, they believed God with their lives on the line. Yeah. And they believed God. They had faith in what God said in Isaiah. He promised them this, 
and they believed it. So when we read the words of God, that's what we need to do. Believe His words. This is faith in God. Today, we hear Him say, He's told us in the New Testament, He says, Hebrews 13, 5, He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Do you know what that means? It means exactly what He said in Isaiah 43. I am going to be there. You will not drown. You are not going to burn. I am going to take care of you. So do we have to worry about what's going on in the world? A lot of Christians are worried about what's going on in the world. My God says, don't worry about it. I will protect you. Amen? Amen. And today, these words are, we need them. Because the world is is going into destruction quickly. But we don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about it. Because this is what God said. Not only do we need to believe and have faith in that, but we also need to have faith and believe all the other promises He's given us in the Bible. And He's given us meaning. Bottom line, Romans 10, 7, Romans 10, 17, and I've said it already, but this is the bottom line. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's it. The Word of God. Read the Word of God. Believe what He says. That's faith. Have faith in His words. Forget about this church teaching of walking out on faith, hoping He's there. No. I have showed you biblically what faith is. Amen? Amen. Amen.